Welcome to this technical presentation on earthing design and modeling for renewable energy projects. This presentation focuses on explaining the design of earthing systems for wind farms and solar farms. Earthing design for battery systems will be the subject of a future presentation. The main topics covered will be soil electrical resistivity emphasizing the importance of accurate measurements, wind turbine generator local earthing, array and inverter earthing, earth fault current analysis, software modeling, and validation testing. The modeling shown in this presentation was performed using SafeGrid earthing software. When you are starting your earthing designs make sure you check the project specifications very carefully. Obtain and record in your design report important factors including expected design life, conductor materials and connection types, conductor sizing factors, fault levels allowing for future growth, protection clearing times, safety criteria, grid depth of burial, and the requirements for surface treatments, as well as considering all of the relevant standards. These factors will significantly affect your earthing designs and impact costing. We have outlined a high-level design process for wind and solar farm earthing systems where the goal is to achieve a design that is both economical and meets safety limits. The design process begins at step 1 with designing the overall layout of the substation and the main power plant. You can pause the video here to review the step-by-step -step procedure. We will start with discussing how to perform the earthing design and modeling for a wind farm. Here is the image of a wind farm where the main substation is in the foreground. The electrical system of a wind farm consists of wind turbine generators, a collector system of cables or overhead lines, and a substation for utility interconnection. The wind turbines generate at low voltages, which is stepped up to medium voltage via a transformer at each generator. The generators are daisy-chained in collector groups through junction boxes via cables or overhead lines to the main substation. The wind farm electrical system is a single integrated structure that is suitable for multiple purposes including lightning protection, power system fault protection, and for telecommunication systems. Wind turbine generators are earthed locally, with a ring electrode installed for controlling ground surface voltage gradients. The earthing for the step-up transformers is bonded with the wind turbine earthing. The medium voltage cable screens are earthed at both ends, and the earth wires for overhead lines are bonded with the main earthing system. Bare earth conductors are typically buried along the collector network paths and bonded between the wind turbines and the main substation earth grid. A wind farm earthing system design requires extensive soil resistivity testing. These tests are performed at the critical locations. The critical locations include the main substation, junction boxes, grounding transformers, all wind turbine locations, buildings, and meteorological stations. An engineer should determine the optimal multi-layer soil model for each critical location using software modeling. However, determining the accuracy of the models involves engineering judgment considering other relevant sources of information such as weather and geological data. The image here shows a computer simulation of a three-layer soil model fitted to field measurements. Two sets of soil resistivity tests should be undertaken at each critical location at 90 degrees from each other. Measure at probe spacings up to 54 meters for all wind turbine locations and larger spacings for the main substation. The British standard provides recommended probe spacings which you can follow. Ideally, to be conservative, measurements should be taken during colder weather after extended dry periods, but this may not always, or ever, be possible. Record the driven depth of the measurement probes with the reading so that the software can compensate for this in the modeling. The wind turbine has a substantial earthing system that protects from fault currents and lightning strikes. The standard states that the earthing impedance should be less than 10 ohms, measured at low frequencies. Wind turbine manufacturers often require a standalone earthing impedance much lower than 10 ohms. We have seen 2 ohms specified by the manufacturer. Everything metallic is bonded with the main earthing point of the generator tower. The wind turbine foundation is incorporated with the earthing system. The standard recommends using either a separate rind conductor or foundation earth electrode, but typical wind turbine generator earthing systems use both. A typical wind turbine local earthing system is shown here. A bare earthing ring is embedded inside the concrete footing, which is bonded with the steel reinforcement and permanently with the tower earthing points. An outer ring conductor is bonded to a maintenance earthing bar in the tower. The connections to the main earthing bar are electrically insulated to be isolated from the permanent earth conductors inside the concrete, 
To design the earthing, it is important to determine the fault currents during an earth fault accurately. A single phase electrical model is used to study the fault currents. The majority of the electrical system is modeled. This requires a significant amount of input data. Due to the complexity of the model, it is recommended to use software for the analysis. Multiple earth fault scenarios are analyzed to establish the worst cases for assessing safety. The two fault scenarios which cause the highest touch voltage hazards are generally high voltage earth faults at the main substation, and faults on the high voltage side of the wind turbine generator transformers. A combined wind farm earthing model calculates the earth potential rise and the spread of soil voltages caused during the worst case earth faults. Hazardous voltages may be transferred onto telecommunication assets, metal pipelines, or fences, which must be checked. An overall grid impedance may be calculated during the modeling which may be used for a future reference benchmark. The images here show the ground surface and grid conductor voltages during an earth fault at the main substation. The design of the main substation earthing system can proceed as a typical substation design would. Refer to relevant standards for your region for the substation earthing requirements. The substation earthing system should be designed in isolation from the wind farm earthing system. In other words, the benefit of the combined substation and wind farm earthing system cannot be relied upon for the substation earthing system design. This is because the substation will most likely be constructed and energized before the wind farm and, therefore, can exist and produce fault currents without the wind farm. The substation earthing system model includes the meshes, steel reinforcement from the concrete slabs, and the fence. The standalone ground potential rise, transfer voltages, and grid impedance will be calculated for validation testing of the substation. The local wind turbine earthing systems shall be designed in isolation from the interconnected wind farm earthing system. The fault current analysis uses the calculated local wind turbine grid impedances. The local wind turbine grid impedance must be lower than 10 ohms or a lower value as the manufacturer requires. The worst case fault currents are used for assessing the touch voltages where touch hazards include a person touching the tower base or metal staircase, while there is a simultaneous earth fault. Junction box earthing grids must be modeled and designed. There are no grid impedance targets. However, safety must be assessed for touch and step voltage limits compliance. The plot shows touch voltages generated from a software model that includes the steel reinforcement, the above ground structure, and the buried grading conductors. Validation testing of an earthing system design is an important final step. However, validation, or current injection testing, of the interconnected wind farm earthing system is often impractical due to the sheer size and complexity of the earthing system. Testing of the earthing is performed in isolation during certain stages of the construction. This avoids dealing with the complex fault current split measurements and interferences. Tests performed for the substation and WTG earthing systems include continuity testing, standalone grid resistance, and touch and step voltage measurements. The substation earth grid is tested at the completion of the construction of its earthing system, including after the installation of the electrical switchgear and metallic fences. This is before the wind farm's collector cable circuits, screens, interconnection and earth continuity conductors. Each WTG earthing system is tested while isolated from the connecting earth conductors. A word of warning. Take care to measure touch voltages on objects that are not usually considered during the earthing design phases, such as security camera poles and post and wire boundary fences. Next, we will explain how to design and model earthing systems for large solar farms. Here is the image of a solar farm with the main substation in the foreground. The electrical system of a solar farm consists of several PV panels forming an array that is connected to a common DC collection point which is then inverted to low voltage AC to be transformed via a step-up transformer to medium voltage. The AC power is transferred through a collector system of medium voltage cables to either switchgear panels or, for large farms, back to a central substation. Solar farms can cover large areas, up to tens of square kilometers, which presents both safety and economic challenges for the design of their earthing systems. The cost of large-scale solar farm earthing systems can reach millions of dollars hence a small percentage of overdesign will introduce a significant extra cost. The meticulous design of the solar farm earthing system is required to ensure a functional system and personal safety during faults. Standard rules and guides apply to the practical earthing layout. 
the final designs and assessment of safety require software modeling. Note that the same approaches used for designing substation earthing systems cannot be used for solar farms due to their very large size, which results in comparatively higher touch and step voltage hazards. Shown here is the CAD drawing of a real-world solar farm earthing system. The array earthing consists of interconnected steel structures and supports. The array earthing is bonded with the main earthing system, which includes the inverter earthing, the substation, and the fence earthing systems. The panel support structures are often relied upon as a part of the main earthing systems. Therefore, the path between panels and supports must be electrically continuous. The support posts must be protected from corrosion through galvanizing. Galvanic corrosion caused by contact between dissimilar metals such as copper and steel should be avoided. Otherwise, tin connections may be used. The software model models the posts as driven rods of an appropriate cross-sectional area and material. There are two ways of modeling the support structures. The above ground structure can be modeled. Otherwise, the interconnection between posts can be modeled using below ground and insulated conductors. Soil resistivity testing is performed prior to construction. The testing procedure should follow IEEE standard 81 guidelines. Note there is a new version of this standard being released. We recommend performing multiple sets of soil resistivity measurements from 1 meter up to 36 meter probe spacings across the entire solar farm with testing locations separated by 500 meters. A single set of measurements of up to 300 meters probe spacings are required for establishing the deep soil layer electrical resistivity, which is useful for the fault current distribution calculations. All measurement sets should be analyzed separately, and an overall conservative soil model should be derived. Similarly, it is important for a solar farm to determine the fault currents during an earth fault accurately. An earth fault level investigation should be performed to establish a worst case fault level scenario. Faults on low voltage AC systems, including on step up transformers or inverters, may be high in current magnitude. Still, the ground potential rise is limited to the low voltage system voltage. Faults on high voltage or medium voltage systems produce the worst case scenario for personal safety and all the scenarios should be investigated. If the substation earth grid is connected to the solar farm, faults from the HV side of the substation transformers will often be the worst case and often result in the highest touch and step voltages. When assessing safety for a solar farm, touch voltages must be checked for all earth structures or electrical equipment within the fence boundaries, metallic fences, whether connected or otherwise, due to possible transfer voltages, and earth structures or equipment in the vicinity of the solar farm affected by transfer voltages. Step voltages must be checked throughout and just beyond the solar farm installation. Software modeling of large solar farms usually involves compromises such as using partial, limited, or approximate models. The standards recommend this. We recommend using partial models of sections of the solar farm for the worst case fault currents, and increasing the model area as necessary to save time. Finally, once safety has been confirmed for the partial model, the entire system may be modeled to get the overall system performance which should be better than that for the partial model. We also recommend including all the earthing system components in the software model. This includes the main grid conductors, array posts and structures, main substation, and fences. The example shown here demonstrates the importance of including as much detail as possible in the software model. Otherwise, touch voltages will be overestimated. Validation testing of an entire solar farm is challenging. This is because current injection testing requires that a remote earth injection point be created at a distance of around five times the maximum dimension of the solar farm, which is often not achievable. The standards suggest that validation testing for the earthing systems of the solar farm may not be necessary so long as sufficient soil. Electrical resistivity data was used during the design and accurate software modeling was performed and is well documented. Note that any earthing system requires lifetime management due to its criticality and propensity for latent failures. This includes periodic inspection and testing, and maintenance. Thank you for watching.